boys. The atmosphere's bobbins. Grab that tambourine. All right, Dad, let's kick a good beat. Meat pie, sausage roll. Come on, hold them, kiss a go. Meat pie, sausage roll. Come on, hold them, kiss a go. Ooh, we got a corner. Ooh, we got a corner. Hello and welcome to Pork Pie Sausage Roll. Come on, Oldham, give us a goal. It's episode 7. We're in League 1. And Oldham are in 7th, quite surprisingly, given how, well, everybody was uh, feeling about it. In terms of the team, they thought that we weren't actually going to avoid relegation. I realised that uh, being on 15 points after only 10 games doesn't mean we're staying up, because we've got to hit that magic 5-0, but... If uh, our ability to win games is anything to go by, there's a strong, strong chance that uh, we're staying up. And honestly, if we can continue to play as we have, there is a chance we might even squeeze... Uh, when I say as we have, as we are capable of, there's a chance we might squeeze into the playoffs. It's a long shot. In all honesty, I don't fancy our chances. In reality, I'd much sooner stay here for another season and continue building because... As you might expect, during the closed season, there were a lot of transfers. So we'll have a look at those first before we go into any uh, real detail with the schedule. We have somebody leaving and somebody starting with us coming up. Um, I've created a certain amount of depth in defence, not just central defence, but also with left and right backs, which of course we didn't have last season. So as far as I'm concerned, the defence is fixed. We have one guy left to come in which is John here. I haven't found out how to uh, pronounce his name yet, so I'm not going to, but he is joining us on the 1st of January. So, and when he does, he is unfortunately going to put us over our wage budget. Oh no, he's not. Our wage budget's gone up. What the heck happened? Some. Oh, that's right. It's because I'm getting rid of... I, I Basically, my committed spending was above the wage budget. But the reason why it's not is because Andy Taylor's leaving. So thank goodness for that. That's great news. Because um, I, I did exactly what I said I didn't want to do, which is I'd, I'd bust the budget a little bit. And it was bust based on John here turning up because uh, in terms of the actual spending at the time, uh, it was 47928 But because of... Obviously, what we're going to be paying him when he come in, it was it was like fifty two, fifty three thousand, which unintentional, but you know it does happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so if we go back to all of the other transfers that I've been making, because there have been a few. Jay Sheridan went. Chris Cannon's out on loan. Chris Cannon, you know, is one of our future prospects who actually looks fairly tasty. Um, He's obviously got a long way to go, but we'll see what happens. We've got Jose Baxter. We ended up selling him to Portsmouth. He had signed a new contract with us, and I'm glad, but I couldn't really turn the offer down, to be honest with you, because, like I say, I'd spent a, a wee bit of money in terms of uh, the budget on players. Um, the other thing I created some depth in, of course, is up front, which we didn't have. Our depth up front was loan players last season. So Jose going did mean a few quid. To add to the budget, as you've seen, I did add it to the wage budget just to keep us up. Okay, very left, because I didn't give him a contract, but that's fine. He's doing very well for FCSB, and good luck to him. Jonathan Bentenke, of course, he'd done really well for us out on the right last season, but, uh, yeah, again, because I didn't give him a contract, he went off to Cyprus, and I wish him all the best. Sonny Seffield, I sold him to Wigan. Um, I'm surprised to say that they actually wanted him, to be fair. He was struggling to get inside because, like I said, I have created some depth in defence. So, yeah, that's the players out, players in. We'll start at the top with Armichi. He is an attacking midfielder on the right. As you know, we were playing and have been playing classic 4-4-2 Oldham. He is able to play as a winger and he has done okay at it. But he has started to shine. Once I played him in the position he actually wants to play in, hence the uh, six starts, two goals, two assists, an average rating of 7.35. He is loving it there. As you can see, he's not—he's a, 
a squad player. He was bought to fulfil a role, to be honest with you. And in fairness, he did look slightly better than that when we had him on trial. But obviously, we've made a few sign-ins and raised the overall quality of the team. So, naturally, he doesn't look quite as good as he did. Nevertheless, though, he has performed very, very well for us. So, I'm very happy with that. After that, we've got Zach Swanson. Picked him up on a free. He's a left back. He is technically an inverted left back, but uh, inverted wing back, sorry. But he's been playing as a normal wing back quite happily and also a full back quite happily. So, I'm not overly concerned. As you can see, he's making some improvements. Again, his potential ability was four stars and one black star, and that has dropped down a star since I've raised the overall level. So, again, he's more of a backup than a first choice, cause, but look at where he can play. He's uh, He's got a lot to offer in that respect. So, And again, he's had six starts because we've had injury problems at the back, and look, he's done quite well. I mean, he's under 80% with the passes and the tackles won, but... Still, an average rating of just over 7. 7.05 is not bad at all. Um, but as you can see, he is improving. Um, so chances are he will meet his uh, potential ability if he continues to get opportunities like he's had. Luke McGee from Portsmouth. We actually paid for him. Can you imagine? 275,000. He's our new goalkeeper. Um, you knew about him before anyway. Um, and it was 275000 that basically came out the wage budget initially. So we obviously recouped that with uh, the sale of Jose Baxter and then some. But uh, yeah, he's been great. I'm very, very pleased. He has He's managed five clean sheets. That's pretty good. He has, however, conceded 14 and 12. So, But an average rate of seven. He's improving. Good one-on-ones. Great reflexes. Good aerial reach. I mean, you know. He's a decent goalkeeper. He is also touted to be a future Premier League, I believe. Um, yeah, it's got a bit championship goalkeeper. Okay, I'm pretty sure it said Premier League beforehand, but never mind. Nevertheless, he's been great, so I'm very happy with that. The Jordan McKenneth, he is on loan from Arsenal, um, playing in central midfield, mostly as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's been great too. Ten starts, two goals, two assists. 88% tackles won, 84% passes complete. Average rating of 7.03. I mean, again. And he's improving here as well. So, again, a lot of that would be his playing time. But, yeah, very happy with his performances. In terms of his contract with... Um, it, it runs out at the end of next season. Or, well, sorry, the end of this season. So, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on him as a, a possible signing. Because that would be nice. We missed out on getting... Uh, the goalkeeper we talked about who was formerly with us. Um, but that's fine. He's now on loan elsewhere. Jordan Stevens we signed from Leeds. Again, another young player. Um, I've been, I have been. was looking for younger players with plenty of potential and managed to find a few with decent ability. So he sits out right on the wing and has been doing all right since he got here. He's had six starts and one assist. Um, where we're not playing with... Right midfield at the moment, he's had, I guess, missed a couple of games. So he will get a chance as a winger, playing in a four position. But as you can see, 92% of the tackles won, 81% of the passes complete, 7.13 average rating. Physicals have declined a little bit, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, there we go, sprained knee ligaments. That's why I knew he had an injury. But yeah, he's not been too, too bad. Nico Empen. Striker. Had a fantastic preseason. I mean, he was off the charts preseason. Look at that, seven goals and four appearances. But yeah, he's he picked up a little bit in uh, League One, but he struggled to start with um, to to even perform well enough. If you know what I mean. I mean, that's where he came on, unfortunately, and didn't play long enough to get a rating. But as you can see, and if we can see, go back a little bit to our preseason. Yes, it would be. We beat Blackpool. He didn't do well there. But he had a great game against Crewe. Did all right against Morton. Had a great game against Curzon Ashton. Had another great game against Ashton under Lyme. Did average against Scunthorpe. Did okay. Uh, did good, sorry, against Colchester. But just wasn't scoring goals. And then he had a, a bit of a run of iffy form. He was 
bad against Berry. He wasn't great against Gillingham, and he was rubbish against Peterborough. So he don't. Th oh yeah, that's right. I played him out of position for a brief amount of time, and then again played him as inside forward against Port Vale, and he actually didn't do too badly considering he was out of position. Um, but yeah, he came in against Coventry, didn't do very well, but then against Burton as a pressing forward, he got one. And uh, he got two as a, an advance forward against Fleetwood. Um, bearing in mind I'm doing, pairing two sets, sorry, playing two sets of tactics at the moment and, and mixing it up a little bit for that reason um, because I need to get the best out of the players I've got and I do have sort of not just a fixed uh, situation. So we also signed Maximiliano Amondarain, the Uruguayan defender, and... Uh, He's doing all right, 6.84 average rate, and he hasn't started that often. He keeps coming on as a sub rather than being first choice, but uh, nevertheless, he's done all right for a 75% of tackles, 72% of passes, but 100% of the shots on target. Bless him. Um, he's done a little better in non-competitive, though he only had a couple of games, but he is keen to uh, get more game time, so I will be rotating him in. Carl Hawkins. Another central defender, like I said. I'm trying to create a bit of def bit of depth. Good physicals and okay everything else. 23. He's already improved a little bit since he's got here. And uh, at three and a half stars, he's he's an excellent choice. I mean, that's the thing. We've got a bit of depth there. We've got Lakaviti, who has returned on loan. Or should I say we just extended it. He hasn't always been playing centre half, though, for us. He does play... A surprising amount at left back, especially where we had a bit of an injury run there. So, uh, but he's been pretty solid. Amanda Rain, you already met Hawkins. Sid Nelson is another one who came in, but you can see there's our depth in central midfield. That's a nice position to be in. Bearing in mind, poor old George Edmondson now is bottom of the pecking order when he was pretty much first choice last season. And of course, in real life, League Two Young Player of the Year, I believe, varying awards for his uh, effort and ability. So, I don't expect him to stay at Oldham too long. Bless him. Have to get another season out of him. Anyway, moving down the list. Who haven't we looked at? Um, Nicky. Nicky Ahose or Ayose. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, so I call him Ahose or just Nicky. Striker. Playing him as a trecatista because you know me, I like my trecatistas. Um, certainly when uh, I'm playing the 4 4 2. Great finishing. Great acceleration. Good, just. You know, all round decent player, three and a half stars ability with four star potential. Again, he, I'm pretty sure he's five star when he joined, but we've raised the overall level. Perfect for this division and has done quite nicely on the goal front. He's 12 appearances, five goals, four assists, 7.24 average rating. Um, again, he's played a little bit better since we've moved around the tactics a little bit. Unfortunately, 4 4 2 is getting a bit stale for some of these guys. I wasn't quite able to make it fire on all cylinders unfortunately um we also have juan asneda who is also another striker a pressing forward or indeed target man as he has been playing um again more as a third choice striker he has wanted more games recently as you can see he's only made one start but had six sub appearances he's managed a goal and assist he has done all right absolutely um it's done a little bit better in non-competitive to be fair but as you can see, good mentals or strong mentals, he's aggressive and brave, which, I mean, it does make him a good pressing forward, don't get me wrong, but uh, um, determined and all the rest of it, reasonable physicals and technically at the peak of his, his uh, time. But like I say, he hasn't been getting the start, so I'm going to try and give him a few more opportunities with, uh, as I say, where I rotate the uh, way I've laid things out with the tactics. It gives an opportunity for him to get well, everybody to get a chance, really. Because technically, that is our strike force now. A Jose, Impen, and uh, Asneda. There's nobody first-team quality outside of those three. Um, we didn't have it last season, to be fair. So, Sid Nelson, he came in from Millwall on a free at the end of his contract. Another central defender, another 23-year-old. Again, three and a half stars with uh, four and a half potential ability. And you can see. He's already made a few improvements, so apparently his determination has dropped. I'm not sure why that is. Um, again, six starts, two sub-appearances. He's done done all right. Um, like I say, I have some depth in the central defense. I get to rotate it around. They are mostly younger players. 
Chris Renshaw, free transfer, goalkeeper, backup for our boy Zeus de la Paz went. Um, again, he's got current ability of two with a potential ability of four stars. He's not going to get a lot of games, I don't think. Um, but he's not doing too awfully non-competitive. But like I say, we needed a backup goalkeeper and he is it. I will, if he starts getting a bit iffy, put him, you know, put him in for a game here and there just to give him some experience. But I don't think that he is necessarily first team capable at this point. And finally, we see Tom Edwards on loan from Stoke, who is a fullback at the right. As I mentioned before, I mean, he's three and a half stars current ability. Four stars and a black star potential. He's, and again, made a couple of improvements since he's been here. Eight games, one goal, two assists. He's been pretty much stunning. 89% of tackles won, 72% passes complete, 7.4 average rating. 7.47 average in the league, to be fair. Um, he didn't have a great, great game in the Czech Trade Trophy. But, as you can see, he's a handy player to have in there. Um, so, like I say, that's created a little bit of... You can see the depth that I created. I did give us a strike force of three. Um, I created some d depth in defense. We're still a little bit weak in midfield. I should also mention release players. Let's have a look at that. Dangar went And Uche, who was a uh, uh, youth player, he was released. Zeus de la Paz, as I mentioned. Usman Fane, he went as well. He is now... Oh, he's still on a free transfer, is he? Bless him. It was a decision in terms of freeing up um, wage budget, really. That was all it was. Um, he hadn't been awful for us. I think he'd actually done okay. But uh, I wasn't happy with his disciplinary, to be honest with you. It was a little bit iffy. And, of course, Johan Branger Engon. He has moved on to past his new, as you can see. He's a 48 rating when you compare him now to uh, where he was. Bless him. But he was a good servant for us. He's at Fylde now. So uh, hopefully he'll do well. Yeah, I mean, he only made 12 appearances, but he did okay. And he's in the National. Hopefully that'll be a better route for him. Just check. No, that's it. That's that's everybody who's gone. So we did all the free transfers. Okay, that's everybody who's come in. So as you can see, we signed quite a few. And we let a few people go and we've moved a few people on. There is still time to move one or two or attempts to move one or two. Because if we actually take a quick look at the squad, we of course still have the likes of... He's down near the bottom. My apologies. And I'll take off the youth teams there. Giles Coke. He needs to go, bless him, but nobody wants him. So I think he's probably going to be... Um, going at the end of the season. He hasn't played for me this season. He didn't play for me last season. And uh, I don't think he's going to. And bless him. And I'm, he's, he's, I know he wants to leave and I'm doing my best, but nobody seems to want him. So I just don't know what to say, really. Um, Mizilu has been playing all right. He's part of the rotation in midfield. Because, like I say, the midfield is the next thing to be strengthening. But it does depend on how much money we have for next season. Rob Hunt, of course, has been pretty reliable, as you might expect. Edmondson hasn't had many starts. In fact, he's had no starts. He's had three sub-appearances. And he's done all right. But that's where he's sort of relegated to now, unfortunately. He's not first choice anymore. Um, Nepo. Nepo Moseno has done all right. But again, he doesn't like playing as a straight left winger in 4-4-2 in League One. It just doesn't work out for him. I mean, he managed it all right last season, don't get me wrong. But if we were rotating him with another player, hence why he got 19 games. But of course, we're having to play him pretty regularly because that is a, a weakness um, in terms of uh, squad depth there. So, when he gets to play in his favoured position, he does better. So... As much opportunity arises that I do that for him, I can. Mauche, I'm glad I kept him around. Super sub. as uh, He's part of the midfield rotation. Does a great job. 7.75 average rating you know, over five starts and one sub appearance. Sia, again, part of the defensive midfield rotation. Um, between him and Mizilu. He's been doing all right. Okay. 
you know, Mizzalu tends to be the preference, unfortunately, just because he, he he seems like a more reliable player, but that being said, Sia has done all right with his four appearances and one sub appearance. Is Juan is Nader? Like I say, as I was when I introduced him earlier, he's done all right, but like I say, he hasn't had the starts he wants. Swanson doing great. Jose doing great. Renshaw hasn't played for us yet, as you know. Amanda Rain Empen, Luke McGee. All doing all right. Who else have we haven't covered? Uh, basically, I'm just showing you the people that we've signed now. And of course, Tom Edwards, our lone players, doing very well. Jordan Stevens, bless him, who got injured, has also been doing quite well. But he was an actual right wing and actually liked playing right wing. So in terms of the four four two, he was perfect. However, he hasn't played in a while because he has been injured. So in terms of the schedule and where we are up to, as you can see, pre-season was pretty much fantastic other than the 4-0 uh, loss to Villa in the Andy Ritchie Cup. It was just a, a little competi competition that I set up at the end of June, start of July, which was just to make a bit of money, really, um, and improve things in the bank because we are poor. Well, we were poor. We've got a bit more money now. Um, but after that, we destroyed Blackpool for to, to finish third place and then... Uh, as I say, all of our other friendlies were just stormers. Just absolute stormers. It was fantastic. First game out against Scunthorpe, 2-0. Fantastic. Went a bit horrible after that. Colchester we lost away from home. Went to Lincoln and lost in the Carabo Cup first round straight away. So naturally that wasn't popular with the fans. A 0-0 draw with Berry when we really needed to bounce back. Berry, of course, a uh, local derby side for us. Gillingham, we got beaten by 3-2, and then we managed a 2-2 draw with Peterborough. Now, at the time, I believe Peterborough were top, as they are now. So, I wasn't too, too disappointed with that draw, because realistically, um, they were a better side than us. But we did go 1-0 up from Niggy. But we had a little problem with Nepomuceno getting sent off. And, in fairness, we've had a couple of red cards here and there that have not been good for us. Um, that is not one of the games. I was hoping to blame that loss on it. Uh, the Gillum game, maybe? No. But yeah, we've had a couple of red cards here and there, and it has not been great. But at the moment, we're on a two... Oh, sorry, I hadn't finished off that month. We finished out the month with a 2-0 win over Rochdale, and I did actually tweet that, because that's a nice result to get over the old enemy. As you can see, we moved into this 4-1-2-3 um, formation. Um, and... It worked, and uh, it took Rochdale out, which was nice. It was unfortunate Stevens got injured then, but still. Now, if we go back to here, we then followed that up with a penalty win over Port Vale in the Checker Trade Trophy, which wasn't bad, but we then drew with Oxford. Um, Oxford, they are in 19th, so I kind of wanted to do a little bit better against them than that, and we did go 1-0 from uh, a corner I believe Zach Swanson got the head in but it was like I say they managed to get one just at half time Cameron Brannigan and then just nothing happened during the second half we weren't able to break them down everybody got tired as you can see because that's Oldham for you we're always tired part of it is the uh, high intensity running that we tend to do but I am also improving or have improved the coaches and uh, and trying to improve the situation with the fitness training as well. So we'll see how that goes. I will mention it ongoing because, as you know, all last season I complained about how tired they were all the damn time. Because they were. So yeah, draw with Oxford. Then we had a loss against Coventry. That one hurt. I'll not lie to you. But... Yeah, they went 1-0 up, we equalised, then we went 2-1 up, then they equalised, and then Callum Roberts on 89 minutes, because I was fairly sure at that point, I was trying to defend it, but I was fairly sure at that point it was going to be a 2-2, but they snuck in with one of those last moment winners, so that was unfortunate. But after that, 4-0 against Burton, I mean a, device, a decisive result against Burton, in this case we did also play, uh, sorry, played the uh, 4 
what they call 442 diamond narrow, but I play it with the three up front rather than the attacking midfielder because we don't have one. We sold him. Um, yeah. And as you can see, Esneda, that was his uh, opportunity to shine. And shine they did. Now, in terms of the Fleetwood game, we were back to the the four one three two four one two three formation. That one, the V shape, um, against Fleetwood. And again, look at it, stunning performance. Fleetwood, of course, twenty fourth. So at the bottom, maybe that's why we won. And Burton, yeah, mid table. They're in thirteenth. So, but today. We're going to have two games in a row. I'm just going to play them both, which is the Bristol Rovers game and the Doncaster game. Um, it is the 1st of October. Bristol Rovers are at the bottom, so it's really an opportunity for you to see us win. Um, I am probably going to change and move to the narrow tactics for that one. The good thing is I can actually um, set it up so I can actually change halfway through and uh, bring strikers on and stuff like that, so it does work quite nicely. Um, Doncaster... They're in fifth. So that's one it would be nice to get the three points for because I do fancy a little bit of a, a sneaky try to get into the playoffs this season. Um, as I say, August was awful, but if we can, you know, manage September type form, you know, only one loss out of six games, that's not bad. Five games, obviously, in September. I could live with that. Okay, that concludes the pre-season and season so far review. Coming up will be the Bristol Rovers game, the Doncaster game, and the Morecambe game in the next episode. Both episodes, of course, being released on Saturday at the same time. If you enjoyed that, please do give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to watch the next episode of Pork Pie Sausage Roll. Come on, Oldham, give us a goal. Thank you very much for watching.